Sources familiar with this investigation say this was not a random act. The victims appear to have been targeted. The fatal shots fired in an alley near the corner of Lawrence and Ashland. Julian Cruz is live in the Ravenswood neighborhood with more. Julian. Well, Ben and Lourdes, the victims' loved ones hearing between 8 to 10 gunshots gunshots just after 10 o'clock last night, leaving a 20-year-old man and his teenage brother bleeding out in this Ravenswood alleyway. I told them don't go outside because they were shooting out here. They didn't listen to me. A dev oh, my God. She, yeah, because I heard that a, a kid got shot two blocks away, like right before this happened. Another kid got shot. So, yeah, she that's probably what she's talking about. She heard a shooting. Oh my God. But they went outside. They heard shooting and they went outside. So her, her sons are probably, you know, with the streets. Yeah, with this shit. 100%. Yeah, they with it. Outside because they were shooting out here. They didn't listen to me. A devastated Amanda Wright lamenting the loss of her sons, 20 year olds. Sun gliders, man. The fuck? Okay, so she got two sun gliders. They was out there like, yo. Their white privilege didn't do nothing for them. <laughs> Yo, I think they, I think they were a brittle like, because a relative spoke and they had a Spanish name. Oh, uh, I thought his name was right. Oh, so them, they 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 son Britos. That's that the mom. Be, yeah, that's the mom so. right here. Them this shots the was mom. probably for their ass. Yeah, I think so. The, the way they fucked them up, I I think it was for them. Oh, definitely. I believe it was for them. I definitely believe it was for them. They, you go out, you hit. If somebody gets shot around the corner, and now you outside in the alley, all of a sudden, you, you a brave motherfucker. You, you, you got some balls. You got big balls, man. Told them don't go outside because they were shooting out here. They didn't listen to me. A devastated Amanda Wright lamenting the loss of her son's 20-year-old son Benjamin O'Neill, always looking out for his younger brother, 17-year-old Jonathan. He loved this little brother. They all had so much love for each other. That's why he wouldn't he went outside when he thought How do you go on camera after both of your sons have just been killed? I mean, and I'm not trying to diss her. I'm asking, like, where does she get the strength from? And having lady, two kids killed, she shot pretty damn composed. Is there any lady in the chat? Ladies, the, the, the link is in the description, man. Ladies, the link is in the description. I'll put it right here. Any moms, Oc Nation moms, man. We need some Oc Nation moms to come up. Um, we need we need we need some female participation today, man. Who go, who go, who wants to come up here, man? Um, anybody wants to come up here, man? We need some female participation, man. Um, I just two of your kids, twenty and seventeen. I mean, they still babies to you if you're the, if you're the parent. Brutally gunned down in front of her. She saw it. I just, it's just the strength. Maybe it's a cope. Maybe this, this, maybe they're still in that state of shock. You know, maybe it's the shock state. Love this little brother. They all had so much love for each other. That's why he wouldn't. He went outside when he thought something was wrong with his brother. Right, as a child. Oh, okay. So he went outside when he thought something was wrong with his brother. So one brother was already outside. I wonder if that brother was at the scene of that other shoot that happened a few minutes before this, two blocks away. That's why he wouldn't, he went outside when he thought something was wrong with his brother. Right, as a child losing her father and an uncle to gun violence. Now, my, my. She lost her father and her uncle to gun violence. Now, both of her sons. The stand is the stand, man. This is like saving Private Ryan, man. What the <laughs> fuck is going Worse. on? Worse. Where did you decide to leave? How many bodies? This is like behind enemy lines. This is like behind enemy lines. Yeah, definitely. I I just don't know where she can go though. If she's a son person, where she gonna move to? I mean, she gonna move to Gary, South Bend, St. Louis, Milwaukee, Racine. Where she gonna move to? St. Louis. 
St. Louis. Anywhere. Yeah, there you go, St. Louis. Maybe she should. I, I got a place. I got well, a here. Place. Boulder, Colorado is beautiful this time of year. <laughs> I think she. I think though you you gotta think this woman probably doesn't have much means, and she doesn't probably have much like you know scope. Maybe I think she would move somewhere regionally. I think a good one, Cleveland. How about Cleveland? Or even you know maybe um. Oh, Indianapolis. You know? It's going to be some podunk town in Illinois what she can move to. What is this, the PTSD tour you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, there's no way to move. Oh, shit, it's out of the frying pan into a smaller frying pan. No, <laughs> no, no. Nah, nah, nah. Go somewhere. Go to the divest. Divest, right? Exactly. I mean. Ain't no spring chicken, though, man. She a little, she a little long in the tooth, man. It looks oh, like she already it. got vested, though. It looks like she already done. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a little, it's a little long in the tit. Yeah, this neighborhood got money, Chief. Ravenswood, <laughs> there's money in this neighborhood. Oh, Ravenswood, but, has money in it? Yeah, but it's part of the stand now, you know? So oh, yeah. You got these kids and, out, sir. Yeah, you know, you like you said, you described it pretty well, how after the riots and George Floyd, these dudes, they kind of realized, like, oh, we could fuck around over here? Say less. Yeah, because the, the protest and the people destroying things in areas where they never go. They're like, oh, shit. So they don't care about their own shit, too. I was like, they like us. They don't care about their <laughs> And then the white people went back to normal, but the sun man still got that image in his head. As a child losing her father and an uncle to gun violence. Now my, my, my boys are gone the same way, guy. <sighs> I don't know what to do. We thank anybody that comes forward with any information to help catch these people. 47th Ward Alderman Matt Martin meeting with the grieving family. No parent should have to deal with what they're dealing with right now. Martin pleading with the public for information. It's a very sensitive investigation, so obviously they are not going to put out information that can jeopardize that. But I've spoken with multiple senior officials within CPD, um, and, and this is getting the attention that it needs. He looked like he could have been their father. <laughs> now, after Jonathan O'Neill was shot, the family says that the gunman or gunman stripped him of his expensive North Face coat, leaving him to die in the alleyway. A GoFundMe page has been set up to so help. They got out and took his shit off. These guys weren't in a rush, man. <laughs> Whoever did this was a professionals, man. The family with funeral expenses. Log on to our website for details. Like, Yo, uh, but I will say this. I, Although I think they were with this shit, they very well could not have been. Because we know the sun, man, is good for killing innocent people. No doubt. Um, very, very true. Still, though, man, like... Um, Word, these two look like shitheads, though. Yeah, they got that look. That look. They got that... They got that I can't explain it, but you gotta be maybe you gotta be a sudden man and know they got no, no, they, they got they got that uh, and I'm gonna be blunt. They got that hip hop, you <laughs> know, that push ice the uh can yeah. get it back in blood. Yeah. We be getting the news at four with new details sur surfacing and a shooting that left two brothers dead. This happened in the Ravenswood neighborhood late last night. Oh, that's night. In the north we side. See those brothers. Oh, okay, so that's the north. Wow. This isn't even the west or the south. Cause the the south and the west is where all the sun men are, right? Yeah, that was like what you what you would call the traditional stain. Oh, oh, the oh the historical back in the day. This is where. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It used to be. Yeah, oh. but now the stain is, is everywhere. Police you know? say those brothers were two of three people shot in the span of twenty minutes in that same area. Right now, the investigation underway to find those responsible and to determine if the shootings are connected. CBS 2's Andrew Ramos has been on the story all day and has new info on what led to the shootings of the brothers. Andrew. That's right, Jim and Marie. We spoke to the relatives of Jonathan and Benjamin O'Neill, the 17 and 20 year old who was shot and killed right here in this alley uh, way right behind their home. This is right along North Ashland Avenue. It happened about 10 p.m. last. I got some nice alleys in Chicago, not for nothing, man. It's night. <laughs> Relatives tell us they believe the younger sibling was lured outside the house by the suspects who he believes and who, who he called his friends. 
Yeah, I'll take oh, he was lured out the house, so they might have a chance of solving this one. If they can, you know, just look at cell phone data and you know, text messages and stuff like that, they might have a chance. Friends, now take a look. Uh, the memorial, uh, memorial balloons, and flowers, and candles now at the site of where these two brothers were shot and killed. Family members describe the two victims, Jonathan and Benjamin O'Neill, as those who stood up to bullies. They believe the shooting was a result of some sort of retaliation. It's even more disturbing. A cousin of the victims told CBS two. They were known as people who stood up the bullies, so they was always in some shit. If they, if you stand up the bullies in Blackistan, you stand in some shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, you, yeah, you are the source of the shit. <laughs> you, you got, you basically are like it's like whack a mole. <laughs> <laughs> you like to fight. You, you, you know, you fight it. <laughs> wow. So that's a good. That's a good little tidbit, man. Two victims, Jonathan and Benjamin O'Neill, as those who stood up to bullies. They believe the shooting was a result of some sort of retaliation. Which even more disturbing, a cousin of the victims brother. told CBS two after the young. I think the I think the this is the younger. That looks like the younger, and this looks like the older. But then again, like, who knows? Yeah, who, who knows? knows? More disturbing, a cousin of the victims told CBS two after the younger brother was shot. The gunman stripped Jonathan's three hundred dollar North Face jacket off him and took off with it. The O'Neill family hoping justice comes sooner than later. You took away their right to grow into adulthood, to experience the world, to have families, to experience future holidays with families, to present to their parents, children, making their parents grandchildren. You took that away from them, all for some selfish unjustifiable reason these kids are around here somewhere we have pretty good descriptions we have names we have trails on social media so we're looking now this was just one of two shootings that happened wednesday night according to police another shooting just five blocks away in the 4300 block of north ashland left a 15 year old wounded the suspect in that case opened fire from a moving car the team is in stable condition with that's pretty rough neighborhood, man. You got you got two of those in a year, man. You living in a sketchy area, right? Man. Right. You got but two of those is, in one night, <laughs> right? But this is a this is a neighborhood gliders with money, Ike. They're paying yeah. a lot of taxes to live there. Yeah, a lot man. Of it's sketchy, man. That's that place right there. Is sketchy. So, no, those dudes probably went to go do some carjackings afterwards, just to end the night, you know? <laughs> yeah, night <like, yeah>. Right. <laughs> They got a new. They can stay out late. They got a new coat, new coat. If it gets cold, right? But think, think about the coat, chief. They're not. They know these clowns know that there's no police out here. They know that the yeah. response time is abysmal. Yeah, and, and they lure them outside, so it's like they don't. They don't even give a fuck. Right. Like, they don't. It's not like... <laughs> right. We we obviously need to address the root causes of violence, huh? Yeah, we, we, we need those uh, interrupters, whatever. And the interrupters, Mayo. This is this is Mayo, Mayo and his people, man. It's your <laughs> fault, man. Systemically being racist and shit man. with non life threatening injuries. Now it remains unclear if these two shootings are connected. For now, the family of Jonathan and Benjamin have set up a GoFundMe page to help the family pay for funeral expenses. For now, we are live in the Ravenswood. Oh, God, this story. Yeah, I mean, obviously there wasn't enough basketball, Chief. 